the only reason I have a fucking resume. <laughs> so, <laughs> templates are kind of like roadmaps. Roadmaps kind of take you to places, and bikers ride on roadmaps. And when I was about 20, the ripe age of 20, I was hanging outside of Lava Lane's bar, and I met a couple bikers, and they were drunk. And they told me I should join their chapter, and then I was like, dude, yeah, bikers are badass. Don't be a fuck with me then. So I'm like totally down for it, and then they start talking about like what I need to do to become a member. And one of those things is family is family. And if you guys don't know what that is, that means anybody can have sex with anybody, because it doesn't matter, because you're all family. And I was like, cool, so I've always got it down, but then I was thinking, and I'm pretty sure you can all attest, when was the last time you saw a young biker? Like anyone remotely my age. So I kindly declined to turn around to him and I said, you know what, man, fuck that. So I was on a road another time when I was coming home from work one day. As, you know, young, dumb people do, I was trying to roll a joint while driving. And uh, I decided very quickly that that wasn't going to happen. So I, I knew of a spot to pull off the road where there was some gravel right before a bridge. It's not a very big spot, but it's a spot. And... Uh, I was so enthusiastic to get home that I was driving about 65 when I hit the gravel. I tapped the brake a little bit and realized that I wasn't going to stop in time. So like any sane person, I began to panic instantly and I stomped the brakes all the way down and I started spinning out and in my head I was going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. But in reality I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. And I came to a stop inches from the cliffside and my heart's still pounding about 30 seconds later and this truck goes by and these dudes like leaning out the window like they're about to take a mailbox out with a bat and this dude totally looked like Hicks but sounded like a freaking straight up surfer bro, dude. He flies by, he's like, yeah, dude, fuck the nation, yeah, I'm gonna stare it up. <laughs> and I was like, that's not what I expected and then I instantly felt more relief because I was like, I might actually be in heaven because that shit fucking, whew. I was like expecting him to be like, yeah, hay and corn. But uh, <laughs> didn't quite go that way. There's a lot of things I'm not proud of, like rolling joints while driving and smoking while driving in general and a couple other things. But this is one of those things. So picture a sophomore high school boy and picture what he does in his free time when he has a cell phone connected to the internet pretty much wherever he goes. I watched porn. So there was this thing that happened at my school and all the schools around Southern Oregon where the Rotary, the Rotary program would gather two sophomore boys and two sophomore girls from each school and they'd go to this like summer camp. And for, I don't fucking know why I got picked. I had shitty grades and it was like a leadership camp. So I'm like, you <laughs> can't, I was like, no wonder our fucking country's in the hole. You send these kids to fucking leadership camp. It's like, <laughs> this fucking dude like does all his homework, has straight A's, valedictorian. And they're like, yo, you're not applying yourself. Let's give you to fucking some, <laughs> some like freaking leadership camp, dude. I didn't know what I was getting into. But what they failed to tell everybody was that there was a three to one guy girl ratio at this camp. So the ripe age of like fucking like 13, 14 or something like that. And I'm surrounded by three girls to guys. And uh, one night went by and then it was pretty good. Nothing happened then. And then, uh, I got started Jones in about the fourth day. I was like, I need to get my fix. So I found a spot where I could connect to the 4G in the bathroom and I said, I'm gonna come back later tonight and that's gonna be when I make my sin. And uh, so I go in there and I think I'm totally alone and it's fucking freezing. It's Dorena, Oregon and the camp is on a fucking river and the wind only blows across the river. So, you can, you can understand, my pants are around my ankles, so I start shivering almost immediately. And I finally find the video I want, and I think I'm alone, and everything's going good. And then I hear a noise in the stall to my left, and I see pants drop, and I'm shivering, and my phone falls on the floor on his side, screen side up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't fucking laughing. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, the slow motion goes through your head. You start hearing the fucking, like, who wants to be a millionaire, like, fucking time music, you know, like, and I get, like, a multiple choice thing in front of my head, and it's telling me, what is this boy going to tell every other boy and girl at this camp because you're in high school and kids are fucked up? 
A, he's going to tell everybody, and kids are fucked up, and you're going to be the laughing stock of this leadership camp, and nobody's going to ever have you as a leader ever anywhere. And you'll never apply yourself, and you'll never get into school, because this will follow you for life. B, a lot cooler. Maybe he's seen the video. Maybe he's like, dude, this is a fucking favorite, bro. Can I borrow this? I'll give it back. Man, you got 50% battery life, bro. My shit's dead. And then option C came around. And option C was a lot more grim. Option C was he takes my phone to a camp counselor and I get kicked out of camp and everybody's going to know why I got kicked out of camp. And it wasn't that that was scaring me. It was if I show up to my house a week and a half early and my parents don't know why I'm there and they explain it, oh, heads on pikes, I'd get an ass whooping. It would have been a bad scene. But then option D plays out in my freaking face. And... Uh, that one was actually kind of funny. Option D was he passes me his phone with another video and we compare notes. <laughs> I was out of lifelines, guys. I couldn't phone a friend. I couldn't plug in, take a poll from the audience, see what people pick. And the dude threw the wildest fucking curveball ever. He goes, ugh. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he goes, ugh. And I, like, I got offended for my porn. I'm like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, what are you watching? Fucking royalty bang? And he's like, no, dude, there's just no art in this. And I'm like, art? I'm like, it's sex, and I'm doing a terrible thing in front of it. I was like, there's no art here, bro. I mean, I might, like, throw some spackle down and cause, like, a little milk spill, but it's not art. And he goes, I'm just, I'm just saying that they're, they're bad at acting. And I'm like, they're porn stars. They failed at acting. This is their outlet. Like, <laughs> you got to take it with a grain of salt, bro. And you don't got to get the grain of salt from your low, dude. It's fucking gross. They're gross. They know they're gross. They get paid way more than me, and it offends me. <laughs> but uh, he handed my phone back, and then he said, let's talk when you get out of here. And I was like... Oh, no, that might have been a camp counselor right there. I was like, he wants to talk after this? I was like, ooh, this is bad. So I finally, I'm like sitting there contemplating. I'm like, what am I going to do, dude? Like, like I got to fucking blow a hole through the cement wall and fucking like Looney Tunes out the back so he never sees my face and he can't. He'll have to like look at my shoes. I'll wear different shoes the whole rest of the camp. Fuck that. <laughs> Throw those clothes in the campfire. Fuck no. But, uh. I had nowhere to go, dude. It was all cement around me. And uh, so I went out there and I confronted him and he was like a super cool dude. And he's like, he's like, you really, he's like, you really should devote your life to something more, you know, like more helpful towards the end goal than porn. And I was like, bro, we're like 14. My end goal got ruined by you when I dropped my phone, dude. Like, my, if you want to fucking leave, I'll get to my end goal and get out of here real quick. The showers are right there. But then he said, uh, he said something funny. He goes, we are at leadership camp. He's like, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I was like, you don't think I'm ashamed of myself? I'm jerking off in a camp bathroom, dude. Like, there's a ghost poop going on right now. The seat was warm when I sat down. I, I high-fived the dude that came out in the same stall on the way out. I guarantee he was on Facebook because it was the only stall with internet. And then finally he goes, well, I'm in B3 if you ever want to talk. And he goes back to his cabin, B3 being the third boy cabin. And I went back to my cabin. And uh, three of the five cabin mates were all on their phones watching porn. I was like, I didn't even need to go to the bathroom. I could have just fucking done it right there. They were like, bro, we understand. And then I realized like, I was in the cabin with all the fucking weird kids. Like One of them had like a freaking harp that he plays with his mouth. And... Uh, I was where I belonged, and I tried to hide from it, and I was ashamed of myself. And the moral of the story is go with what you know and take the chance that you're around people that understand you. <laughs> Don't go to some fucking grease-ass bathroom with, like, XXX written on the wall with a phone number. It's, it's not worth it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for time.